Hi there, welcome back to another SUP bottle review. This time we're going to be looking at definitely the most groundbreaking inflatable SUP that we're going to see in 2019. This is the Red Paddle Co Compact 9 foot 6. This is a full size SUP that folds down to half the size of a conventional paddle board. So it's a super compact board, hence the name the Red Paddle Co Compact. In this review, we're gonna go over all the facts about the new Compact, and we're also gonna give it a little bit of a comparison to the Red Paloco Ride 10.6 as well. And we've also got Will from Sup Border coming in, who is a super keen adventure paddler who took the Compact away on a little mini adventure with the 10.6 Red Paloco Ride. And he's gonna give us his opinion of what the Red Paloco Compact is really all about. So I will warn you, this review is gonna be a little bit longer than our standard video reviews, but then this isn't really a standard board. A completely new concept and design from the market leaders in ISUP, Red Paddle Co. And they have designed this board as a no compromise board. So this board should do everything an equivalent maybe Red Paddle Co Ride 10 6 should do, but better. And that is what we're gonna be looking at in this review. So talking about the specifications of the new Red Paddle Co Compact, it's nine foot six long, it's 32 inches wide, and it's 4.7 inches thick. The volume is 222 liters, and it weighs eight kilograms, which is incredibly light for a Red Paddle Co board. The equivalent ride Red Paddle Co 10.6 is 9.9 .9 kilograms, so it's almost two kilos lighter straight away. The full package weight with the paddle, pump, and bag only weighs 12.7 kilos, so it's fairly lightweight to get a whole board in your back. And it retails at 1,299 pounds, 1,499 euros, or 1,899 US dollars. So you might have heard of Red Palico talking about this board with 10 years in the making. All of their experience of making ice ups well over 10 years now going into this board. And that is true without a doubt. You've still got the Red Palico super high quality as you get with all the Red Palico boards. But there is so much in this board that you do not find in any other Red Palico board in the range. So the internal core is made of drop stitch, but this isn't any normal drop stitch fabric. This is an extra high resolution thread matrix drop stitch, which for a start sounds epic, but also means the board stays much more rigid with its shape. This board, like other Red Palico boards, has the MSL outer coating, but this is a packed technology MSL coating, which basically means it's way more malleable than the other MSL technologies they put on their board, which means then when you come to roll or fold your board, it's much easier to do that. Then what's finished on the outer layer is the quad string, as you heard about, which are on the top and the bottom of the board. The real important thing to notice about this is that they have placed them exactly where you put your feet. So when you're standing on the board, they give you as much rigidity as possible. Because of all that, when we put this board in our deflection test and we compared it to the deflection of a Red Paddle Co ride, it was barely anything in it. We're talking about millimeter and millimeter and a half difference between the compact and the standard 10.6, which remember is over a kilo, almost two kilos in weight. So it's got a lot more material over that complete board. So this new construction with the quad stringers really makes a difference. And the board is very, very stiff. And on the water, it's barely noticeable if there's any difference at all. But we'll be talking more about the board on the water and the feel of it later on. Keeping a look at the top of the board, you've got a really comfy carry handle. Neat thing about this is it's offset because they can't put it directly down the middle of the board because when you fold the board in half, the carry handle will be in a way. Now this is fantastic for people who've got slightly shorter arms or longer arms because you can actually hold it this way up or you can come down from the shorter side and hold the handle. That's a great little feature that and I've paddled with many people who have wished they've had handles slightly offset than the center line. Looking at the deck pad, you've got two sections of your deck pad. You've got your left and your right because again, they've got to fold the board in half. Now, some people might think this might be a bit of a hindrance because you haven't got any deck pad in the center of the board, but actually I'm gonna reverse that and actually say it is actually a great help because it gives you a really good understanding of where your feet are on the board, even if you're wearing wetsuit boots. There's still a different diamond grip deck pad at the back of the board here, which is great for feeling when you want to do your step back turns. And up at the front of the board, bungee straps that you'll find on other red paddle coats, but you'll also notice how they've brought them in a tiny bit so they sit completely over the quad stringers. Again, a neat little feature, really ties it all in and makes it look really smart. The pressure valve and leashing point are both at the back of the board like your normal boards would be, but they're shifted and pushed over to the side so when you fold the board up, they don't get in the way. 
So turning the board over, you can see some standout things that make it look very different from a standard Red Paddle Co. For a start, you've got your stringers on the bottom of the board, which remember are directly below the top stringers, which make the board nice and stiff. And also, instead of having three eye fins that you'd have on your traditional Red Paddle Co. 10.6s, 9.8s, 10.8s, you have a twin fin system. So you've got two fins here. Now, without a doubt, Red Paddle Co. have put a lot of effort into these back fins for helping the board go in a straight line and ease of paddling which we're going to be talking about with Will later on but definitely by putting two fins in here and making the fins nice and wide and very swept back towards the back of the board they're further back than normal than you would find on a normal 10.6 that gives the board much more straight line tracking makes it way easier to paddle in a straight line but they're still very durable they've got a bit of flex to them so they're going to take the knocks up the beach they're a very simple easy clicking fin system to use it doesn't take any time at all to set up and get on the water red paddle co have done a really great thing with this fin setup and it really does make a difference to the board's tracking and performance so I said earlier, complete this bag with the board and all of the stuff you need to go paddleboarding weighs 12.7 kilos, which is not that heavy. Couple that with a smaller bag, half the size of the standard Red Paddle Co backpack, it makes it so easy to carry and put on your back. But it's definitely not just the size of the backpack Red Paddle Co have been working on. They've really been concentrating a lot of effort on the shoulder straps, making really nicely padded. The back area is incredibly padded with breathing areas so you don't get a hot sweaty back and there's lumbar support here which you can change in Unvelcro to adjust the height difference so if you're a smaller person or a bigger person you can adjust that to suit you. It's still made of its very heavy duty sort of ripstop finish that you find on the other Red Paddle Co bags. The handles are padded really fat and incredibly well sewn into the bag so you're never going to be ripping those off of the bag. But really for me the inside of the bag is what I really love. Opening the bag out you can see that what fits in there is the biggest pump on the market, the Red Paddle Co Titan. So we'll take the pump out, we'll talk about that in a second. You also get your leash as standard with the package and at the back of the bag there you'll find the five piece paddle fits in nicely all in its sort of pre-labeled sections. Also you've got a nice carry pouch at the front of the bag there which you can put your fins in and keep your allen key there for doing your fins up. This backpack hasn't got any wheels like the other Red Paddle Co backpacks which I really think is a good thing because this is a lightweight comfortable walking backpack and you do not need wheels on a backpack like that. So having a quick look at the Red Paddle Co Titan pump, if you're familiar with this, you'll know this is the world leading inflatable pump that you get with all of the Red Paddle Co boards. It is the first twin chamber pump on the market. It's got a large chamber and a slightly smaller chamber. You start pumping using both chambers on the downstroke and then when the pumping gets hard and a little bit more effort builds up in your arms, you can switch the lever at the back and just pump on the skinny chamber, which means it's really easy to get a lot of air in your board and get it up to a high pressure especially a board of this size and also a good point to note there is the red paddle co compact is designed to take exactly the same amount of air pressure as any other red paddle co board so from 15 to 25 psi but really 18 to 25 is a really good range to go paddling so having a look at the five piece compact paddle you get with your package this is a high modulus carbon paddle so it's a carbon shaft with a nylon blade making it really hard wearing it means you haven't got to worry about it if you're getting out of docks or rivers or quaysides the paddle blade is really tough and also this is laser etched on the front of the blade here so any scratching the sticker won't come off it is in and on the paddle blade this paddle is so easy to put together you take your sections you cannot get them in the wrong place they have a push pin push them in lock that section in take another one push pin lock that section in and so on very easy very simple and your top system is finished off with the lever lock a slightly shorter lever lock than standard the lever lock has got a lever in the top there that you unpull and a stainless rod down the middle to a rubber washer fantastic system idiot proof and extremely stiff doesn't twist a very good paddle to come with a package like this we talk about the paddle again a bit later on with will so we were both really interested to test this board when it came out because we saw the concept early on we both really liked it but you especially will you saw it from a 
sort of totally different angle. What angle did you see it and why were you really interested to get a go on this board? Yeah, well, as you say, the, the design is really innovative. It's completely new. Um, but the main thing that w I got quite excited about was the, the compactness of the compact mm. and, and how that could be applied um, and the benefits that it would give to um, sup touring and adventure and the possibilities of what, what you could do with it. Yeah, because you, well, you do a lot of touring and a lot of your touring is on inflatable SUPs, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because obviously if you want to travel somewhere on a plane, an inflatable SUP is often the, the best thing to, to, to use. So um, having it more compact and have the ability to um, put something on your back which is a lot smaller was really appealing. So how did you test this board? What did you feel you had to do to really understand if the compact did what you think it might have done? So um, I'm, I really like going and finding new places to paddle, bit quirky places to paddle, interesting places Off the beaten to track. Yeah, absolutely. So um, what I wanted to do is, is take the compact on a little mini adventure. Um, and test out how portable it was in terms mm -hmm. of walking with it and transporting it um, in a vehicle um, and then and paddling it um, in a location get a feel for how it performed on the water which is obviously one of the most important things um, and and just get a feel for it that way so well, um, we took the the board um, as alongside an, a 10 six ride um, yeah. from Red Paddle Co um, and took both boards on a um, in, in a car small car um, to test out portability of the product um, and then on a, um, a two mile hike um, with them on the backs um, before paddling on a on an old quarry to see how it performed. So the compact backpack is obviously smaller than the 10.6 or the current Red Palico backpack and it's obviously going to be lighter but the big thing that I noticed in the first look review is the the features and fittings on the backpack look way more designed for walking for actually using it so how was that when you actually took that on that two mile walk compared to the 10.6 backpack as well? Yeah. Well the, the, the bag as you say there's some really great design features on it and um, they performed really well um, lumbar supports and, and bits of padding here and there and, and the straps were really good the board's much lighter um, the bag's very light so on your back it feels very light it's mm -hmm. obviously much easier to, to, to walk with um, but the compact size of it as well made made it really really good because whereas the 10 6 board is very long and you bash your legs on it yeah. and there's there's yeah. actually quite a lot more windage on on the, on oh, yeah. the bag when you're about that yeah. the compact is is fits you fits fits onto you really nicely um you can take the weight on your hips rather than it all pulling off your off your neck you can be walk for long dis distances it's all much much nicer to use and actually what it started to make me realize is that you know you can really use this 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 backpack and really travel with it rather than really just, travel. just having a backpack um to, to that that your board fits into you you can actually conceivably just take this wherever you want yeah so so it's almost like the red palico original or the still the existing backpack is a backpack to transport your sup which is great and you can carry it but the compact backpack is a, a backpack you'd actually take on a distance go somewhere properly with it. Absolutely, yeah. Right. And it's, um, in that sense, it's a complete game changer because really? it, it yeah. means that you can, you know, uh, straight away I'm thinking, I could do a lot with this board. I can, yeah. it would make, mean going on city breaks would be a lot easier. Sm small trips here and there, just because th the whole package is so much more transportable. Wow, okay. So moving on to the board itself then, let's talk about getting it ready, inflating it, especially compared to on a, a standard 10.6 or a 9.8 or a 10.8, whatever. How was the inflation side of it? It's really easy to, to, to pump up. It's, it's a bit smaller volume. Um, so that means that it's a bit quicker to pump up. And yeah. then you've got the Titan pump, um, which is a really fast um, pump to use. So yeah, no, no real problems really. Obviously you have to fit the fins, which is another little task to do, but mm -hmm. the system is really well, well designed, well engineered. Um, and it, it, it was just as fast, if not faster, to pump up than a ride. And then moving on to the paddle, clipping the paddle together, that's a neat system. It's amazing how they get a paddle to fit in that bag anyway. Yeah, my first doubts around it was, is this paddle going to be stiff enough? It was, um, it was more, than, more than capable of doing what it needed to do. Um, very light, um, nice blade shape and performed really nicely. Yeah, and definitely the blade is a little bit smaller than last year's paddles and it's great for that sort of just general paddling, average paddlers. Yeah, I mean, and if, if you're going on a city rate, you might try and go a little bit further and the smaller blade size is slightly better for that's endurance. True, that's true, that's true. Because this basically paddle is, okay, it's a five-piece version, but it's still a carbon nylon, which was one we reviewed last year, and it was the best, one of the best winning paddles on test, wasn't it? So yeah. carbon shaft is a really good combination. Now, we've both paddled this board, and we both paddled it compared to the 10.6. We've obviously paddled the 10.6 for many, many years before. It's a very well-known board for Red Paddle Co. Um, it was a really interesting to get on this because Red 
kept on saying it's going to paddle as good as a 10.6 and yeah you, you're losing a lot of the length and obviously a foot off the nose of your board off the full waterline length will make a difference to the tracking um, but they've done a lot of work on the fins and to make it go in a straight line and I have to say for me it absolutely goes in a straight line and I'll even say I think it goes in a straight line better than the 10.6 only marginal but I really think it's a good performing board is equally as good as the 10.6 yeah I mean I was a little bit dubious about how well it would go in a straight line but um, I tested it um, alongside the red paddle co ride um, 10.6 and I couldn't really notice a difference no. and I, I, I'd probably add to what you said in terms of maybe it was a little bit better yeah I, I... I kept questioning it, I kept thinking it can't be, but actually I do think it is a little yeah. bit better. Um, the other thing to note is like, when you're paddling it, it's notably lighter on the water, isn't it? Yeah, it feels much more lively yeah. um, just because just because of that light weight. Um, you can do cross, cross bow turns on it nicely yep. just because it's a little bit more compact and um, just generally much more agile. Yeah, it definitely feels a little, yeah, more lively underfoot, more reactive, but still paddles in that straight line. So I'd say it's easier to paddle this faster than a 10.6 mm. as well. And that's coming into glide length as Absolutely. well. So um, really happy with how it paddles on the water. Talking about stability of the board. So this is 32 wide, which is the magic width of all sort of average boards. It's just as stable rocking it side to side as a 10.6 and if you're getting into your step back turns and and just i know that we're going to get some questions about it could you take this in the surf absolutely yeah i mean i think the two, I think it would, two, two, two back fins would do quite a nice job yeah we haven't used it in the surf but i see no reason why this wouldn't surf as good if not better than a 10.6 yes the fins are slightly more swept back which make you go in a straight line but you know you're surfing an ice up of this size you're just going to be trimming down the line and having fun aren't you so definitely you could take this in the surf as well to save those questions we're going to get from the stiffness point of view if you're comparing it to 10.6 i did not notice anything really on the water maybe you notice a slight bit more with the 10.6 because it's longer as far as the board itself I didn't notice anything different really on the water i couldn't notice anything yeah its structure felt really stable um and i think it probably comes down to them putting um the stiffening where it needs to be they put in a, the design Loads a of design lot in this it. board a yeah. lot and i think to i think it to be fair to say in general paddling it it does exactly what they say but what would be the limitations with this board um this board would be a really great platform to to go on on a get get into sup touring and sup adventuring um, its length is going to be a bit of a limiting factor because it's going to have less glide than say a 12 14 foot touring board um, however it's it's very portable it's very small so as a way of getting into that um, it's fantastic what it's got going for it is that um, particularly the um, the tie down bungees yeah nice and big a board of this size often you might just see a tiny little area to tie something down yeah. but you could get a decent size um a hundred hundred litre dry bag under there no problems and quite easily go on an overnight trip um, that's true so more than just putting your flip-flops on the front you can actually put stuff on this board yeah, you've got loads of space um and a nice solid elastic as well um yeah fantastic fantastic well thought out um as a first adventure board and the compact nature of the the board and the bag make that really really um feasible so like all adventures they all come to an end and the deflation and packing up of the red paddle co compact because it is different to a standard red paddle co board or any inflatable board on the market isn't it how did you find it was different and what pros and cons did you find to the process you have to do it, it is a bit different it's not necessarily harder once you learn how to do it um you you need to get all the air out before you fold it in half um to then roll it around the pump um and if you don't do that it can be a little bit tricky um but having packed it down a few times now i've learned how to do it and mm. it, it's fine um and really yeah you just need to maybe roll it up um in the in a standard format without folding it in half to get yeah. rid of the air quickly unroll it fold it in half wrap it around the pump right so it's just a case of what, like two sessions and you've already learned a new process yeah yeah it? it's so just it's a bit different but yeah you know this is this is uh groundbreaking technology for inflatable sup so it's going to be a little bit different in yeah. the way you use it and although the process is a little bit more tricky what you what you find is that once you've rolled it all up around the pump it's just one 
package that you put into the bag and zip the bag up, which has already got the paddle in, in its nice um, sections. You're putting into the package a Titan pump, which is a large pump, which means it puts air into a board quickly, um, but it's not the most transportable um, pump out there. But in this package, it, it becomes yeah. one of the most transportable packages. That's a very good point, yeah. So do we think the Red Paddle Co will best suit? Well, it's going to be great for a beginner getting into the sport. But really, it's also going to be good for those people who have been paddleboarding for years, haven't they? Because they're going to have a board that can go in a tiny bag and go places. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's it's really really interesting. You can you, I'd quite like to have one of these, and it, you know you could put it on the boat. You can transport it easily. You could go and keep it in the prom. back of the car all the time. Yeah, just yeah. in case you want to go paddling somewhere. Yeah, you can you can put it on the back of a bike. You could put it on your back and go skateboarding to to your sup spot. The, the the opportunities are endless and actually it opens up loads of potential and it's loads. quite an exciting concept. So to conclude with pros and cons and value for money, pros, well there's probably quite a few pros to this board. Yeah, I mean where'd you start? <laughs> it's really good, it does everything that your normal 10.6 inflatable would do, Yeah. Um, but the compact nature of it when it's packed down um, gives you loads of more opportunities for what you can do. Um, if you've shortened space for storage, you can store it easily, but you can also take it more places. More places. And I think for me as well, the weight. Yeah. Eight kilos is is is, is light, isn't it? Yeah, it's it is quite um, it is. It, it, quite astounding how different that much that weight saving makes when you're holding the boards. Yeah, and I mean, I mean, other no, don't get us wrong. Other brands make lightweight boards, but this is a Red Palico board. Just bear in mind. So the quality is completely up there, and it's eight kilos, and it goes in the bag. So for us, it's like, all oh, right, that's a whole different. You know, ball game for Red Puddle Co. Um, cons, any negatives you got that you want to bring towards it? Um, I mean, we talked a little bit about the deflating process. I don't really think it's a con, it's no. just something to be aware of. Um, on the, the bag is obviously very good, well thought out. It could do with a chest strap, just to give you another option of um, fitting that backpack to you to you really well. Um, but that's, you know, it's, it's just a, it's an improvement really. It's probably a con because you're walking further further than you've ever done before yeah, with, with a backpack. Yeah, yeah. the so. backpack's really good, but it, it would be nice to see that, that feature on it. So value for money, 1300 pounds, 1500 euros or 1900 dollars. It's an expensive ice up. Is it worth it? I, th I think it is. I think it's you get so much for your money in this. Um, don't forget you get a carbon nylon paddle, which performs really well. You get... They're the things I forget. The paddle, the pump. A top pump. The bag. <laughs> comes with a leash, a great bag, and you know the, the board's really packed full of innovation and technology, and it, it will do more. So it is the same price as other top-end ISAPs, but you get the paddle you get the top end Titan pump and you get the backpack that nobody has seen and it's the smallest board on the market. So actually, it probably is very good value for the price point and there's nothing else on the market that can touch it. Yeah, I think that's a really important point to make. It does something that nothing else out there will do um, yeah. in terms of the, the, the portability, the performance, um, its compact nature. Nothing else out there is really ticking all the performance boxes as well as the compact and lightweight. Yeah, so definitely with some things, other things suffer, but with this board, nothing seems to suffer, does it? No. So I really hope you found that SUP border review interesting and informative. It's been great to have Will in here on this one. Definitely the Red Palico Compact has been great for us to review. We've been very excited to see this, and just for the R&D, the technology Red Palico are putting into this is great for ISUPs in general, isn't it? Really pushing the boundaries and changing the normal structure of how an ice up should look. Yeah, I think it's fantastic. Um, innovation is fantastic to see, you know, everybody is making um, ice ups in the same way. Red Paddle Co have proved that they are market leaders by pumping a load of time and I imagine money into developing this new technology that is that has the potential to completely change the way we think about ice ups going forward. Personally, I'm really excited to see where it goes. Um, the the way that we can have more portable ice ups, um, yeah. removing some of those barriers to 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 using an ice up, um, which is often around the size of it is on your back, that could open it up to some really interesting adventures, some challenges, um, walking to remote paddle locations, some really incredible paddle locations. So, um, really well done for Just Paddle Co for for pulling something together that that 
is is going to start to allow us to do those type of things. Yeah. It's going to let our sport go to new levels. New levels. So thanks very much for watching that softball review. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you next time with another review from me, Ruben, and Will. Cheers. See you later.